You are looking at a sagittal section through the brain and viewing some very important structures that are going to relate to sleep, recovery, and the release of an important hormone. And I think we can all agree that sleep is very important. Even mild sleep deprivation over a few days can impact cognitive and physical performance, productivity, and the overall health of a person. And the more physically active you are through sports and exercise, you could make the argument that sleep becomes an even more important part of your recovery process. And one of the reasons why sleep is so important for your recovery is that when one is following proper sleep habits, there's a spike in a hormone called human growth hormone or HGH. So we're going to talk about some of the incredible effects that this hormone has on the body and your recovery, not only recovery from exercise, but even from injury, and also discuss some important sleep protocols and habits that you can deploy in your life to help you improve your sleep and the release of growth hormone. Growth hormone is released from this amazing gland called the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is located at the base of your brain. And I'd often tell students, if you went straight back from about the bridge of your nose, you'd eventually run into this gland. The pituitary gland secretes growth hormone into the bloodstream where it can then circulate throughout the entire body, which is important because growth hormone promotes the growth of nearly all body tissues, including bone. So this means it is essential for normal growth and development, throughout childhood and adolescence. And as I just hinted, is very well known for its effects on cartilage and bone growth. So any deficiency in this could inhibit the growth of the skeleton. Or if you had way too much of this during the growth years, someone could grow to be as much as eight feet tall. And this condition is called gigantism. Growth hormone is not only essential for normal growth and development, but it is also important for adults as it stimulates tissue maintenance and repair, and even has some powerful metabolic effects. And I want you to go a little bit deeper with me on how growth hormone actually helps with tissue maintenance and repair and how it exerts these metabolic effects. A huge part of tissue maintenance and repair is about proteins. Proteins are major building blocks that provide structure for our tissues. Think tendons, ligaments, other connective tissues, and of course, proteins are a huge component of muscle tissue. And at the cellular level, growth hormone enhances the transport of amino acids, the building block of proteins, into the cells, as well as turns on genes that cause proteins to be synthesized in greater amounts. So if I've got more amino acids to work with inside the cell, and I have the genes turned on to utilize these amino acids to build more proteins, then the cells can deposit new proteins into the tissues. And this helps to explain how growth hormone gets involved in tissue maintenance and repair, and why optimizing growth hormone release could be beneficial for recovering from exercise and even injuries. And this has also even led many clinicians like orthopedic surgeons to utilize growth hormone with their patients to help speed up recovery from certain surgeries. But what about the metabolic effects of growth hormone? Well, growth hormone also enhances fat utilization, and it does this by causing fatty acids to be mobilized or pulled from fat storage, which would then increase the amount of fatty acids circulating in the bloodstream, and these fatty acids could then be utilized and burned as energy. And so the ability of growth hormone to both promote fat utilization and increase protein synthesis in connective tissues and muscles causes an overall increase in lean body mass, which is another reason why proper levels of growth hormone can be beneficial for fitness, muscle growth, and body composition. And even why some in the fitness and bodybuilding world may try to even take exogenous growth hormone in the form of an injection. And let me be clear, that's not what I'm recommending here, because we want to focus on optimizing the natural release of growth hormone. And this is where we start getting into our discussion about how proper sleep habits can help us to do this. Unfortunately, not everyone gets a good night's sleep. Some people still feel fatigued even after getting what they thought was a full night's sleep. Others wake up with dry mouth or a sore throat, and some even have interruptions in their breathing throughout the night. And because of this, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Sleep Doctor. The Sleep Doctor is an FDA-approved at-home sleep test that accurately measures key sleep metrics to help diagnose the root cause of your sleep problems. And this is done from the comfort of your own bed, helping you to avoid spending a night at a sleep lab hooked up to various machines in a strange bed away from your home. That's not only uncomfortable, but can often be expensive. So with the Sleep Doctor's test, you get to take the test in your own bed for a fraction of the cost. And starting is easy. First, you schedule a brief video chat with a board-certified physician to approve your at-home sleep test, then you'll receive your device in about three business days. The device is also very easy to use, and it records your breathing patterns while you're asleep, 
and automatically shares the results with the doctor, all in one night of sleep. Then after the doctor reviews your sleep data, you receive a personalized sleep report and a therapy recommendation depending on the diagnosis. I think we all have a pretty good idea that sleep is very important to one's overall health, and understanding your sleep is one of the first steps to improving it. So if you're experiencing sleep problems and you're interested in trying one of these tests, go to trysleepdoctor.com IHA to get 50% off your at-home sleep test. That information and the link will also be in the description below. Growth hormone is released in pulses, increasing and decreasing throughout the day. And you can see this pulsatile pattern with the graph. But you'll notice on this particular graph that there are a few larger spikes. And what is accounting for this? Well, there are a handful of things that stimulate the release of growth hormone. Some of these are low blood glucose or low concentrations of fatty acids in the blood, which can occur during fasting or starvation. It's also stimulated by exercise, trauma and stress, and during the first two hours of deep sleep. And one thing that we didn't mention earlier is that the pituitary gland that released the growth hormone was often referred to as the master gland because it doesn't just release growth hormone, it also releases many other hormones that control other endocrine glands throughout the body. But we know that the pituitary gland actually has a boss of its own, this structure above the pituitary gland called the hypothalamus. And it's important that we mention the hypothalamus because the hypothalamus is one of the body's major regulators of homeostasis. And so if the hypothalamus gets feedback or signals from the body about conditions of fasting or starvation, emotional stressors, physical stressors from trauma or physical stressors such as exercise, it can tell the pituitary gland to release more growth hormone in response to these different conditions. And the hypothalamus is also involved in regulating the body's circadian rhythms, the sleep-wake cycles, and therefore tells the pituitary gland to release the hormone during a certain phase of sleep. So coming back to this graph that we looked at earlier, the first large spike of growth hormone that you see was due to a strenuous exercise session. And then the second large spike occurred during sleep, specifically the first one to two hours of deep sleep. So as you can see, this first one to two hours of deep sleep is very important for this spike in growth hormone. Because if you get this spike or this extra bolus of growth hormone, this can work in conjunction with some of the other recovery processes that occur during sleep to help stimulate tissue repair in various structures throughout the body, including the repair and building of skeletal muscles. Not only can you look at this from the perspective of exercise and tissue recovery, but this is also important for protein synthesis that occurs in our neurons. Like when you are developing memories and organizing information that you learn throughout the day. This spike of growth hormone also helps with this process. So if you miss this first deep sleep cycle, you also can miss this big spike in growth hormone. But you might be thinking, wait a minute, if this happens during the first two hours of sleep, how could I miss this? If I get at least the first two hours of sleep, wouldn't I still get the spike? Well, this is where the circadian rhythm matters. You develop this circadian clock, this sleep-wake cycle, and you could think of it as if the cells of the body have the specific clock or schedule that they are adhering to and are ready and primed for certain things to occur during the different phases of sleep one of those being this larger release of growth hormone during those first one to two hours. So let's say you normally went to bed at 10 p.m. every night, but then the next one or two nights you went to bed at 11.30 or even later. It has been shown that you will miss or have a diminished release of the growth hormone due to this abrupt change in your sleep routine, even if you got the same total number of hours of sleep. It's almost as if the body is saying, oh, I missed my regularly scheduled release of growth hormone and then moves on with the sleep phases. And so this is one of the main reasons why sleep consistency is so important for growth hormone, recovery, and many other restorative processes that occur during sleep. So one of the habits you want to develop is going to bed and waking up at the same time every day, which helps regulate your body's internal clock, promotes better sleep quality, and obviously helps to optimize this nightly release of growth hormone. And I do think it's worth noting that occasional deviations in your exact bedtime are not going to be the end of the world. But if you constantly have this erratic sleep schedule, over time, this would not be ideal for growth hormone and again, many of the other restorative processes that occur during sleep. And obviously, your body can make adjustments to this. Meaning, if you normally went to bed from like 10.30 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., and maybe you got a new job that required you to get up earlier, and you changed your sleep schedule from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., or maybe you moved to a different time zone, your body, with a little bit of time, would adjust to this. 
assuming you are moving into another consistent sleep routine. And another little tip that you could try is to avoid eating two to three hours before bed, as there is some data that is starting to show that this can also be helpful to the release of growth hormone that is coming during that first one to two hours, and can just also help improve one's overall sleep quality if you avoid, say, pounding a big old piece of cheesecake right before bed, which admittedly is one of my major weaknesses. So hopefully this has been a fun and informative topic, and we've just scratched the surface of one of the many reasons why great sleep is so beneficial as well as just scratch the surface on growth hormone. So more to come on both of these topics. But in the meantime, with all this talk about how growth hormone stimulates protein synthesis, you may be interested to know how much protein you actually need in a day, which you can check out here in one of our other video links right there. And of course, thanks for watching everyone. Let us know what you thought of the video and I'll see you soon.